everybody, it's Ari Warren, registered dietitian nutritionist, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and I have type 1 diabetes. Okay, so today we're going to talk about why you should not be extending your sleep activity all day. If you're not doing that, that's great. If you are doing that, then you may be aggravated with why you're having these highs and lows because you think, what the heck, I have this much tighter range, why am I up and down? So I'm going to explain what sleep activity is doing for you, what are the limitations, and why it is better to use your regular mode for the day and to use sleep activity while you're sleeping. For the people that keep their blood sugar extremely tight and they don't have a whole lot of variance in their blood sugar, then that might be something you can consider, but of course always work with your educator. And But again, these pumps are made and have these certain features. They're made to be used the way they're intended to be used, and so I'm going to explain the benefits of using it the way that it's supposed to be used, okay? So, first off, let's talk about no activity mode. So no sleep or exercise activity. What is the algorithm? So if your blood sugar is predicted to hit or go below 70, your basal will be suspended. If your blood sugar is predicted to go between 70 and 112.5, your basal will be decreased. If your blood sugar is predicted to go 112.5 to 160, your basal will be untouched. If your blood sugar is predicted to go between 160 and 180, your basal will be increased. And if your blood sugar is predicted to go above 180, then you will have an increased basal and an auto correction. That auto correction will be 60% of your usual correction bolus, and it is reset every 60 minutes. Now, Comparing that to sleep activity mode. Sleep activity mode takes about five hours to take that the range from regular mode down to a control range of 112.5 to 120. That's 7.5 milligrams per deciliter for your range. That's tiny, okay? And with a very, very tiny range, you don't have near the cushion as you did when your range before your basal would be touched was between 112.5 and 160. Okay, so with sleep activity mode, there's less of a cushion, there's a tighter range, and you don't have access to the auto correction. And so the reason for that is because it's so tight of a range, if your blood sugar is going above 120, it'll just start increasing your blood sugar. If your blood sugar is predicted to go below 112.5, then you'll have that decreased basal. But we are people, we like to eat and exercise and move and live, and so we're going to have normal fluctuations with our blood sugar. And the issue sleep activity going on is that if your blood sugar is starting to go low at a fast rate because you're doing some cardio, then it's the sleep activity isn't able to be as aggressive as the regular mode because it doesn't expect these huge variations in your blood sugar. And let's say that you, you know, ate some good food and now your blood sugar is increasing and it's going at a fast rate. Again, because that sleep activity is such a tight range, it can't compensate for that large rate of change. And so your blood sugar is moving too quickly for the sleep activity to be as aggressive as it needs to to keep you from having those swings. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, it's that tight, tight range that doesn't allow for the cushion and it also doesn't allow, you know, if your blood sugar does go super high, then you can't use that auto correction, which is really nice. Okay. So how do I, you know, how do you decrease your average blood glucose if you can't use your sleep activity all day. So one thing that you can do is you can slightly increase your basal, but you just have to be careful. So you want to stay lower of the 112.5 and the 160 range. You want to slightly increase your basal, but just make sure you don't increase your basal too much because it can cause rebound highs. And you may think, how does that work? Okay. So, if your basal is too high, that's gonna make your blood sugar be dropping. And as if it's starting to drop, or if it's going to go below that 112.5, or below that 70 mark, then your basal is going to be suspended or, or decreased. 
So if you have a suspended or decreased basal and then you have your meal coming up, now we don't have good coverage going into the meals because now you have very low amounts of insulin and then you eat your meal, you have carbohydrates, you have protein and fat, they all affect your blood sugar, but especially the carbohydrates, and that can cause your blood sugar to shoot up higher than it would have had you had the good basal going into your meal. So what I would do working with you is we would need to go into your T-Connect and look at your CGM with your Dexcom, look at when your your control IQ is giving you auto boluses, looking at what boluses you're putting in for food and for correction, and looking at what your average blood glucose is. By analyzing and looking for trends, you can better make small and safe adjustments and have better lower blood glucose. So I'm happy to work with you. I know your endo is happy to work with you. So you can send me an email or you can just schedule through my website. And lastly, dun da 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 type 1 diabetes for the newly diagnosed, what to expect, what to do, and how to thrive. And guess what? Ariel Warren, RDN, CDC, ES. That's me. Okay. So my book is out and I'm really excited for you to have it. This took a lot of time and heart and soul and I'm excited for anybody to access it. So you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and you could also get it through BAM and Indie Books. I will have the link to this book. So this book is good for people who have just been diagnosed, but it's also good for anybody who just needs a refresher with type one. There are 14 chapters. We go through nutrition, we go through exercise, we talk about uh, the fluctuations in blood sugar and how to simplify your management to make diabetes easier so you feel like you can get your life back. We also talk about having kids or we also talk about alcohol and diabetes and we also talk about the emotional tolls that come with the diagnosis and so this book has a lot it was uh, it's a big part of who i am i actually the preference in this book is a journal entry from my dad when i was first diagnosed when i was four years old and each chapter starts with a chapter from real people who have type one as well and that's just to let people know out there let you know that you're not alone you have a support group you have people that understand you and so this is just to help you have more education and to understand that again it's never about perfection with your management but progression so I will put a link to this book I will also put a link to the content with this video about sleep activity and I also put a link to my website so you get more information if you'd like to work with me so hopefully you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you next time. Okay, bye-bye.